Previously, we looked at how we could find the correlation between two variables by graphing them on a scatter graph and then drawing the line of best fit through the points such that, broadly, there was an equal number of points either side and it went through uh, some central point x bar, y bar. And we looked at the difference between correlation and causation. However, we also saw in the examples that we did that you could have had a different answer to the person next to you in terms of the equation of the line of best fit and both been right. What we're going to look at today is how we can actually find the best line of best fit so that there is only one uh, answer and we can be a bit more mathematical than um, yours looks about right and yours looks about right and having an answer within an acceptable range. So today that's essentially what we're looking at. How can we draw the best line of best fit? So um, the first thing we're going to look at is this concept of a residual. So a residual is defined as the vertical distance between a data point and the graph of a regression equation. So suppose here this was the line of best fit that you drew just by I looking through the points. So for each point then there will be some point here so if I don't know, suppose x here was 10 according to the equation if you plugged in uh, x equals 10 you, you would end up with some value of y. However uh, the value here does actually have um, a, a corresponding value of y. And you can see there is, or there might be, a discrepancy between the value, the predictive value according to the formula, and the actual value. And this distance between the two, or the difference between the two, is termed the residual. So you can see that for some points here, this data point is actually very close to the predicted data point. So that would be almost zero, and indeed it could be zero. So essentially, um, we've got positive residuals, negative residuals, and zero residuals. Now what we want to do is have a look at how we can make the, uh, the, the sum of the squared differences as close to zero as possible. So this resonates with the work that we did when we were looking at standard deviation because we can see that if we just added these positive and these negative values they're going to cancel up and give us a value of zero but we can see here that all the, all the points are not on the line so zero is a bit misleading. So to get around that, we square all of these differences. So what we want to do is minimize the square of all these differences from the line of best fit. So uh, let's have a look at an example to try and put this in context. So uh, in this diagram, we've got three points. So P is here, Q is here, and R is here. And these are the corresponding points according to the equation of this line. So we can see that there's a difference between each of these. What we want to do in order to draw, to draw the best line of best fit is to minimize or make the square of these distances as close to zero as possible. So uh, this is the formula that we're going to look at. Now it looks a bit intimidating, but all this is saying is uh, the uh, gradient m can be defined uh, as sxy over sx squared. sxy is just the sum of x multiplied by y minus the sum of x multiplied by the sum of y over n. And sx squared is the sum of x squared uh, minus uh, the sum of x all squared divided by n. So let's again put this in context. So here are um, our examples and we want to find the least squares uh, regression formula in order to find the, the, the regression line. So first of all we're going to put in this extra column x, y. So these are just our x values uh, 1, 2 and 3 and the corresponding y coordinates uh, 3, 1 and 5. We then multiply x by y in this column and square x in this column. Now we can apply this formula. Sxy is the sum of x times y, so that's this column here, these are all the sums, so 20 minus sigma x is 6 multiplied by sigma y is 9 all over n, so that's going to give us 2. Sx squared, the sum of x squared, this is our x squared column, the sum at the bottom there is going to be 14 minus the sum of uh, x squared over n equals 2. So the equation of the regression line then we can use um, this formula y minus y bar equals sxy over sx squared so that's the gradient that we found here multiplied by x minus x bar so we can find uh, y bar is 3 x bar is 2 the gradient we can see here is 2 over 2 which is going to be 1 so we end up with the regression line y equals x plus 1 now that is mathematically the best line of best fit and there will only be one answer um, the, the good news is, however, that uh, your calculator will do that. So you're not going to be expected to do all these calculations. This is something that you may go into, potentially in the exploration, but 
standard exam questions are going to be something like this. So here we're looking at um, a table showing the distance in kilometers and airfares in US dollars from Changi Airport to 12 destinations. So we've got here the distance and fare. We want to use the GDC to sketch a scatter diagram uh, with the line of best fit, write down the equation of the line of best fit, and use your equation to estimate the cost of a flight. So in order to do this, open up a new spreadsheet, head at distance and fare, put in the numbers. We're going to go to add data and statistics. Um, and we are then going to uh, select the variables. So on the X variable, if you just hover over here somewhere, this box should come from select distance. And then here, if you hover over here, you should get this box and put fair. We can see here we end up with um, a scatter graph that looks like this. In order to find the line of best fit, we're going to go to regression, sorry, analyze regression, and then click here, show linear MX plus B. And that will give you the equation of the line of regression without having to do all those um, calculations. Once we've got this, then we can make predictions. So we were trying to find um, uh, the fare when the distance was 1,000 kilometers. So all we're going to do is substitute in uh, x is 1,000 and end up with a fare of $200.30. Right, once you've uh, got to grips with this, then have a look at exercise 10 on page 347. Uh, and the next thing we're going to have a look at then is Pearson's product moment correlation coefficient. Now this is used to find a numerical value to determine the strength of a linear correlation between two data sets. Uh, again, last time we looked at the concept of correlation and positive and negative correlation and indeed strong and weak correlation, but it wasn't especially mathematical. So today we're going to try and put some numbers on it using something called um, Pearson's product moment correlation coefficient, denoted R. And again, we'll go through it, go through the theory of it, um, but realistically, in the exam, you're going to be using your calculator to find this. But let's just have a look at it from first principles. So, first of all, R can take values, all values between negative 1 and positive 1. Um, and um, you should recognize, uh, hopefully, what goes in these gaps. So just take 30 seconds to try and figure out um, the, the connection between these numbers and the description for the correlation that it denotes. So value of 0 obviously is no correlation, a value of 1 is positive, perfect positive correlation. Between 0 and 0 0.25, and this should be the modulus of R, because uh, it could be, for instance, negative 0 0.11. We're talking here about very weak, between 0 0.25 and 0 0.5, weak, between 0 0.5 and 0 0.75, moderate, and between 0 0.75 and 1, a strong correlation. So this is what we've got here, something looking like this. Uh, the formula to find the Pearson's correlation coefficient is denoted R. And again, we should recognize some of these from the, the previous section. So R is SXY over SX multiplied by SY. And again, these are the formulas that we can use to find that. So um, let's have a look at a question. Sue wants to determine the strength of the correlation between the number of spoons of plant food she uses and the extra number of orchids grown from plant. Use Pearson's correlation coefficient formula to interpret the relationship. So here we're explicitly asked to use the formula. Um, more realistically, we'd use a calculator, but anyway, let's have a look at this example. So here is our uh, de independent variable, spoons of plant food, and here is the dependent variable, increasing the number of orchids Y. So that's our data, and here are um, all of the formulas. So uh, if you think you're in a position to calculate R, then uh, by all means have a go now, otherwise just follow through the rest of the video. So um, SXY, this is our table of data. So SXY is the sum of X times Y, which is going to be 60, minus uh, sigma X times sigma Y all over N. So that's going to give us SXY of 10. SX is going to be the square root of sigma, uh, sigma X squared, which is from this column here, minus sigma X, 10 squared over uh, N, which is 4. That gives us root 5. And similarly, SY is going to be the sum of uh, Y squared, which gives us 126, minus uh, sigma Y squared, which is 20 squared, all over N, which is 4, and that gives us root 26. Substituting all those into R, we end up with a value of 0 0.877, which suggests there is a strong correlation between the amount of plant food and the number of orchids grown. On our calculator, however, we're not going to be doing this. We're just going to set up a new spreadsheet, again, put in the two variables, x and y, uh, and then you're going to go to uh, two variable um, uh, uh, data, and uh, you are going to um, 
enter uh, enter that and if you have a look at the data here you'll end up with this value of r so you're just going to enter the data go to analyze two variable statistics and if you scroll down uh, so you've you've put regression equation you've selected regression equation equals mx plus b and if you scroll down you'll also see here that r equals 0 0.877 which is a lot faster than having to go through and work all this out so uh, once you've got to get to this please have a look at exercise 10 off 10f on page 352